Hello, welcome back to day number two of our underwater adventures with paper circuits. And yesterday we wired up some lights to make our aquarium lighting blue, which is awesome. And we learned a little bit about why the water that we see is blue, which I thought was really fun. Today we need to add some fun animals into our deep sea diorama. So we have the angler fish that we're gonna learn about today. This is maybe the creature that will give me the most nightmares <laughs> of the deep sea. So I'm really excited to teach you guys a little bit about it as we make this paper circuit. But first I wanna tell you guys what you're going to need today for our paper circuits. So you need our template. So this is our template, it comes in your Patreon email. You can always get the Patreon emails at patreon.com slash rosyresearch and that helps support us and support the projects and the programming that we are creating. You want a pair of scissors? Any kind of good old scissors will work, just something that will cut nicely. You need a battery to power your paper circuit. We use CR2032 batteries. They're three volts, so if you swap out for a different type of battery, I would suggest making sure that that battery is three volts. And then you need an LED in whatever color you're going to choose to make your paper circuit in. So for the angler fish, they make a light at the bottom of the ocean and you could choose what color of light. Do you want it to be a yellow light? Maybe it's gonna be a white light. It's sort of up to you what you choose. Ooh, that one's a rainbow. Um, so it'll be up to you what you choose for the color of the light, but you'll need one LED for your project in whatever color you want to make it. Um, and there's no right or wrong color for that, just for fun. Then you'll need a type of tape that does not conduct elect electrons. So when I talk about conductive tape, that's like laying down highways for electrons to drive on. And non-conductive tapes are paper or plastic tapes. So masking tape, electrical tape, scotch tape, duct tape, washi tape, all those types of tapes um, are gonna be great for your non-conducting tape. So that's the tape that doesn't lay down the highways. And then you need a conductive tape like this. this is the copper tape. They make aluminum tape as well that will work. Um, and this is like the highways that will create the roadways the electrons can go on and have fun and light up their LEDs. If you don't have the copper tape, you can use aluminum foil. All right, and you can cut it into really skinny strips and sort of follow the same way. This is just a little bit more difficult because it doesn't stay down the way you want it to. We're also using aluminum foil if you find problems in your project. You can patch little spots with aluminum foil. And today's project, this is our little angler fish and his teeth have, or her teeth actually, have gotten a little squished up. But I use aluminum foil to make really sharp teeth for my angler fish, which is cool. So that is all we need. That's all we're really gonna need all summer long to make our projects. So. Get all of your supplies and then come join us. You can come join us one day a week. You can join us five days a week. It doesn't matter. With that Patreon subscription, it gets you into all of the fun. No holds bar. So that you can come as many days or as few days as works for you. It also gets you into our Zoom classroom, which if you don't want to be on YouTube, you can go over into Zoom and you can still have live interaction and type questions in chat that you might have as we go along and Evan can read those out to me. And also, if you are in chat anywhere, you can type your name in chat and Evan will tell you that you're here because we're about to do our shout outs and we can see who's here. But please type your name instead of just hi because sometimes your usernames are cryptic. So you gotta let us know actually who it is. All right, let's see who we have here on this nice and cool day today because it was so hot yesterday, oh my goodness. I think the hotness had people waking up early because oh my gosh, it was so we hot. have Naomi. Hello. Oh, I'm glad you're here with us. Maybe she's brushing her teeth, just getting out of bed. In returning for a second day, not George's classmate, Wait. Mimi. Oh, Mimi, hello, Mimi. I'm glad that you are joining us again today. That makes me really happy. Ooh, I hope that you're gonna make an awesome aquarium. We should probably give a shout out to... Rohan. Hi, Rohan. Hello, Rohan. It's great to see you. I hope you had fun at soccer. And Venetia, who is at probably the world's greatest camp. I can't wait till she comes back and we hear about it. Um, and, and Kaya. John. And John. And Zoe and Brody and Chase. Hello, all of my friends who I know will be coming, either showing up, and Hassan. We have to say hi to Hassan, too. Yeah, and hopefully uh, Raiden comes by later. Yes, and Raiden and Riker. Oh, my goodness. 
Oh, I love our crew. It is fabulous. And we will be here all summer long. And hello to Georgia. And Georgia has a question. Mine looked when I was cutting it. See? Oh, that's okay. You can just keep cutting around it. All right. So to make our angler fish, I'm going to talk you guys through what we're going to do for the first couple steps, and then we'll do it, and I'll teach you a little bit about it. So we're going to cut on the thick black lines, and in here it might get a little tricky. I think that's where Georgia was having a little trouble. It gets a little tricky in here, so you're going to do the best you can. And then there's two dotted lines right here that we're going to fold our fish, and it will fold it in half so that you sort of are hiding your circuit. Notice I have this great angler fish, and you can't see the circuitry inside of her. All right, so that is gonna be our first step. Perfect, Georgia. So Georgia's got hers cut out. I'm gonna get mine started on cutting out. And I will teach you guys a little bit of cool facts about anglerfish. So I know that my anglerfish is a girl. And that is true for everybody. Everybody right now is making a girl anglerfish. And that's because the females are the only ones that have lights on them. The boy anglerfish don't have lights on them. In fact, they're really, really small. They're like an inch long. They're like this long, the boy anglerfishes. They never grow. Can you imagine being born tiny in the deep, deep sea and then never growing? So they're actually hungry their entire lives, the males, because there's like never enough food. The bigger fish always get the food from them, which is a bummer. But the female releases a hormone that they can smell in the ocean. And when they smell it, they're like, that smells delicious. So they go over to the female, they find her, and they start to nibble on her belly. This is the part of monsters, guys. Like, no joke. I don't think, I don't think the Brothers Grimm could even think this up. As they nibble on her belly, her belly secretes some chemicals that actually melts their lips away. All right, so now you have this little tiny male fish who doesn't have enough food to feed himself and is now losing its lips. Oh, poor thing, right? It keeps happening, so they keep trying to chew, and then they actually literally fuse into the female. So the female's body melts away the male's body and it eats up his eyeballs and his fins and his entire body, his jaws, everything, except for the gonads. And then he just like hangs out, I guess, with the female. I guess it's not hungry. I don't really know if there's much left. I mean, I assume it also eats his brain. So it's just like, that poor boy, his whole life he's hungry and he finally finds food and it melts him and just consumes him. Oh! It's horrifying. Yeah. All right. So I've cut mine out. We are going to go on the two dotted lines right here. And let me tell you another monster-esque fact about the anglerfish as we're folding. Her jaw is not like our jaw. It can actually like move out from her body and she can shoot it out an entire body length. It's an alien. I am kind of wondering where this fish is from. You it's know, super scary. Maybe Raiden, who just joined us, is gonna go catch one. Ooh, maybe Raiden, that would be awesome. I'm gonna help Georgia get her little folds started right here. So it's just two little folds that are right next to each other on those gray lines. And then they make a little fish that has just sort of like a little, like a little bump up. And that will help us because we're gonna press it onto our battery. All right, and then you hide the circuit so in your final project, you could hang a string and even if it spins around, you won't see any of the circuitry. That's all on the inside for our little fish. All right, perfect. So we are gonna get started on wiring what this, this up. red thing? Oh, great question, Georgia. So Georgia cut her red thing on it, which is totally fine. This is where we're gonna put our little LED. So if you wanted, you could cut around that and you could leave that on there. I actually cut mine off. So we can put the fish this way. I cut mine off, but I left my leg. So the big thing to note is that your LED is actually going to be outside the body of our fish here. So it's going to, you could either leave that to remind you or you could just snip it off and then you'll have sort of that smoother head. That's up to you, Georgia. Okay. 
All right, so I'm gonna tape this up here with a little piece of tape and we can learn about how to wire it up. Yeah, I cannot believe her jaw snaps out so far. Well, I mean, I guess it's kind of useful. It is. A shooting jaw. She uses the light to lure in fish who are like, ooh, what is that light in the deep dark sea? I've never seen such a beautiful thing. There's no light down here. And then she's like, oh, <laughs> and it's gone. Perfect. And then everyone says that? Yeah. All right, so we are gonna use our electrical conductive, our electrically conductive tape. So our copper tape or our aluminum tape. And we're gonna tape it down on the two pieces on this template that are orange and yellow. All right, and we need to do these two pieces in one single piece of tape. So the orange one will be easy, just a nice straight piece of tape. The yellow one we're gonna have to turn a little bit and I'll show you how to do that. And just really quick for our friends who are new, I know maybe Mimi hasn't done too many paper circuits. When we get our copper tape started, we want to just get a little bit started and then we'll start to stick it straight to the paper. And that's because if we don't, if we peel it all the way off, it gets really um, curly and really hard to deal with. And then by the time you've undone it, it doesn't have stickiness so it won't stick to your paper. I can't even undo it. And then it just doesn't work as well. So what we do instead is we get our copper tape started by pushing our nail under, all right? And your copper tape should be coppery colored on the back side. It shouldn't look papery anymore. And you're going to just stick it straight onto the paper the way that you're going. So if I'm doing this orange one, I'm going down. I want my copper tape to look like it's going down and I can just then press it on. All right, and then you wanna go right up to the edge of this paper, my friends. I'm gonna go straight on down and into this green circle. We need to not just barely make it in, we wanna make it in at least halfway. We don't wanna go out of the circle, so we can rip it or cut it before it leaves that circle, all right? And then if it's a little wobbly or bumpily, you can just use a fingernail, I like to use my thumbnail, to press it down. And that will be what we've got there, all right? Georgia's doing a great job. She's working hard on hers. And then we're gonna go here and we're gonna make a couple turns. So I'm gonna show you a trick because we wanna keep this as a single piece of copper tape. We don't wanna rip it. By ripping it, we make different layers of highways and then we have to get our cars from one layer to the other. If we just fold it or bend it as we go, we sort of make these like ramp pieces to our highway which helps us get on that highway. So again, I'm gonna start it and then I'll stick it straight to that paper. I do wanna make sure these two pieces of tape that I just laid down and I am laying down, they don't touch each other, just like they don't touch each other in the template. All right, so I get here and it looks like it's starting to go down. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give myself some extra and I'll just kind of press it down a little further down. All right, just like that. I've got some weird stuff going on here, but that's okay, it's still a piece of copper tape. The electrons don't care if the highway is straight and flat. There are no potholes in their worlds. And then now I've gotta go straight to the side. So I'm gonna, again, I'm gonna give myself a bunch of space and I can even sort of pull it over that way and then press it down. I have a huge wave there, that's okay. I've got a big wave. I'm gonna make sure I go into that gray circle, but not out of. And then I can just press that wave down. That wave helped me get to my turn. And I can just press this all down. And it doesn't really matter how it looks because it's all one piece. For both of those lines, it is one piece of copper tape. And I heard Georgia say, oh darn, which might mean that hers ripped as she went. No. Um, so when I was doing this, Mm -hmm. It was too little of a piece, and oh. I did a perfect turn. Oh, Georgia got through the turn, and the piece was too small, which is always a bummer. I do like to make sure I measure. I, I do want to say, if you accidentally got to the place where you're like, oh darn, I was doing so good, but now it ripped. Let's say I had ripped right here. What you could do is you could actually tape in a little piece of foil over that rip. Okay, so the two choices you would have would be to start all over, so take up this piece of copper tape, or to try to put a piece of foil over the top, okay? 
So those are two things that we can do to fix our circuits. All right, and that makes it a little easier. Yeah. All righty, oh, that looks so good. Georgia, great job. So now we are gonna put our batteries in and we're gonna use our non-conductive tape. So we're using our masking tape, our scotch tape, or electrical tape, any of those papery, plasticky tapes we are using. What color Ooh, Georgia shredder? doesn't know what color. I think I'm gonna do, I think I have white for myself, but you could do whatever color you I'll want. I'll wait and see what white looks like. Okay, she's gonna wait and check it out. But you should grab some tape to put your battery in. And you don't need a whole lot of tape to put your battery in. We're gonna put it so at this green circle so we can see those letters, okay? So I have the letters pointing up at me. I could still read them if I wanted to. And it's in so like the this, green circle. Like this pointing up. Mm -hmm. It's in the green circle. And you'll take a piece of copper tape, make sure we don't put it straight over the top. So not like that, not over the top like that. We have to go on the edges. Like this. So we're gonna go, I'm gonna put mine on this little edge. And I like to like, if I'm on the edge, you can actually make like a little pocket by sort of folding that tape up and pressing it sort of right into the sides, just like that. And so it makes a pocket. You, sometimes you don't even need more than one piece, but you could put more than one piece if you need to. But notice I'm keeping that middle top area clear. That's really, really important because our switch is literally gonna be putting this piece of copper tape here on top of that battery, which happens when I fold it over. Okay, so we wanna leave that top part clear. And that can be a spot where you can look to troubleshoot and see. And then you're gonna take your LED, and I'm realizing, I don't think I actually pulled out the white one, so I'm gonna chuck it. Yeah, there's white. And we are gonna take our LED, and our LED is gonna stick off of our anglerfish. For the first time ever, our LED won't be inside our project, it'll be outside. So we need to make sure, there's one leg that's slightly longer, than the other. So over here, this leg on this side is slightly shorter. This one's slightly longer. So the long leg needs to go on this line that says long leg. That's the leg that comes all the way down and makes the, the turns. So I'm gonna flip my LED over and you're just gonna spread those little legs apart just a little bit so that the short leg can meet and the long leg can meet. And then you can make it so that they just, they don't have to touch a ton. You need, you know, just a little bit of space, quarter inch, okay. few millimeters, and we will tape it right there all right so first before we check if it works we want to tape look, in look. our led yes and that is exactly why sometimes our led if it's not taped in the legs will move around all right and we need to make sure that each leg is touching their own line of copper tape they're not over on the paper right we want it on that copper tape and then we can just stick down a piece of tape and you can press it down really good I'm gonna pull this off. You can press it down really good. And you might say, Dr. Erica, I don't like how that tape comes up over the top of my fish. And that's totally, that's totally reasonable. But what we can do is we can actually cut that piece of tape around. So we can take our scissors and we can cut around this part, right, like that. And then we can rip it a little bit and then we can cut it again. Oh, I can just rip it, it looks like. So that way we can make it a little bit more polished, but the tape goes all the way up. It's very sticky to me. All right, and maybe I'll cut. I'm gonna spin it this way for a second. Oh my, and it's cut not working. This little part right here. I wonder why it's not working. Mm, George has got a great question. She wonders why it's not working. I'm gonna test mine. So I'm gonna fold it to test it because right now it's off because this long leg is not touching the top of my battery. So my circuit or my circle is yes. not complete. All right. So the way to make it complete is I need to make this part touch and I can do that by folding it up and touching. And you'll notice I have to press, that's my switch. So that allows me to turn it on and off. All right, because our batteries only have so much power, we can't have it on all the time. It'll stay on for maybe a few days, but then your project will be dead. Now you might be wondering, but Dr. Erica, we are making a diorama and I kind of want it to hang there and do its thing so I can show it off and I want it to be lit. I don't want people to have to press. Maybe you want an interactive one where people can press. That's actually a really cool idea. But maybe you don't want that. 
in which case you use little magnets. So I have these little magnets. They're really teeny tiny magnets right here. And I put one on each side, right around where I would normally have pressed my fingers. And those magnets are attracted to the metal of the battery and they are actually pressing down. And you might have to move them around to find the right spot because I could be on the battery sometimes like that and it's in the wrong spot. So you gotta find the right spot for them to be on just like that, and then it'll stay on for you. So that you can use as a switch where if it's hanging by a little fishing line, it can still be on and still be trying to gobble up fishes. Can you use anything else in that? Um, yeah, you could use, like some people use binder clips or sewing clips work really well for that. Um, I'm trying to think of other things. With paper, paper circuits, a paper clip would probably work, yeah. It's a little trickier, anything that gives it pressure for the paper circuits. We don't have like an, a click on and off switch like we do with a lot of the electrical circuits we have because those require solder. But you can use magnets and any sort of like clips. Yeah, paper clips, binder clips. All right, now Georgia is saying hers is not working like she would like to, which I love it when that happens, Georgia. Thank you. Because that lets us look. Let's take a look under the hood of Georgia's. And I don't know if Evan will be able to get this. I see what it is right off the bat. It's super common. So Georgia, if we look right up at these LED legs, we've got the long leg that you can see maybe through the tape is on top of that copper tape. But the short leg is actually hanging out to the side. In fact, if I take off this tape, it's like literally off of the paper. So what we can do is all we gotta do is just move it in a little bit, and make sure it's hitting that tape, and then we can chest it again, and there it goes. So it's just your leg. Your leg was off. All right, and that is why we want to make sure all of our legs are always really securely on top of those lines, the copper tape lines, and not on the paper. Yeah, so she's got hers working. Hopefully you guys have yours working. And we are going to go over into our Zoom classroom so we can decorate. Because I don't know about you, but I'm kind of a fan of this anglerfish. This anglerfish needs a little art. It's a blank canvas. Although, ooh, I should show you guys what I did for the teeth before we leave YouTube, our YouTube world. The teeth were super easy, though. All I did was take a piece of foil, and you cut a bunch of really sharp, jaggedy teeth. We found that, I'm going to cut a bottom piece first. We found that um, we really liked using the foil instead of paper for the teeth because it let us get really, really sharp teeth. So if I just cut a whole bunch of triangles into here, I start to get the very sharp teeth pieces that we had had at the, in my, my anglerfish. And these women are fierce hunters. They are really good hunters. And they really fend for themselves. Really creative. I mean, who would have thought you should you know, build a biochemical so. Lantern. That is one way that you can make really sharp teeth on your fish is by cutting some foil like that. Yeah, and bioluminescence is really cool. Actually, tomorrow we're going to learn about the bioluminescence of jellyfish. And I think that one's also very interesting. But yeah, life. There are plants that are bioluminescent that will glow in the dark. There is algae. Sometimes when you throw a rock into the ocean, it'll glow. And you can see it literally glowing, a glowing trail on its way down, which is Amazing. Yeah, I think you so I think all of those things with bioluminescence are really cool. We'll learn a little bit more about it tomorrow. Um, but in a moment, we are going to go over into Zoom and we are going to decorate our animals, check out people's boxes. I know Naomi sent us a picture of her box so far, which I'm super excited about. And we can add them to our boxes and we'll start creating our fun little diorama. All right, I'm going to say goodbye to our YouTube friends. We'll see you guys tomorrow as we make jellyfish. And hello to our Zoom friends. And again, if you want to get into Zoom, the meeting ID and the password to get into Zoom are all in our Patreon page at patreon.com slash Research. We hope you will start to join us. Come as many days or as few days as you want to. Come learn science with us. Send your kids. And we will be here in the fall doing something similar so that you have a specialist that you can go to any day of the week if you are distance learning at home. All right. Goodbye, my friends. We will see you tomorrow.